Hi everyone and welcome back to the Learning Stethoscope. In today's video, we're diving deep into the physiology of micturition. That's the scientific term for how our body stores and then releases urine. To understand this process, we first need to know which organs are involved. So let's take a look. It all starts in the kidneys, where blood is filtered and urine is produced. From there, urine travels down two muscular tubes called ureters, which empty into the bladder where the urine is stored. As time passes, urine gradually accumulates in the bladder, causing it to slowly distend or stretch. The wall of the bladder is made up of a muscle layer called the detrusor muscle. Because it's a smooth muscle, it has the ability to relax and contract, pushing urine down through the urethra and out of the body. In this diagram, we can see the male urethra, which passes through the penis. Along the way, there are two important sphincters, present in both males and females, and that are crucial for holding urine and maintaining continence. These are the internal urethral sphincter and the external urethral sphincter. In males, between the two sphincters is the prostate gland, which surrounds the urethra. This is clinically important because in some men, the prostate can become enlarged, such as in benign prostatic hyperplasia, and compress the urethra, making it difficult to urinate. Now, the diagram we've seen is from a male, but the female urethra is quite different. Females don't have a prostate, and their urethra is much shorter, which is one of the reasons why urinary tract infections are more common in women. Now, micturition is controlled by multiple regions of the nervous system, including both the autonomic and somatic systems. Let's break them down by location. In the sacral spinal cord, specifically in levels S2 to S4, we find the parasympathetic center, which is responsible for promoting voiding or bladder emptying. This area also contains the Onuf's nucleus, which is part of the somatic nervous system and controls the external urethral sphincter, the one we can voluntarily contract or relax. Higher up, in the thoracolumbar spinal cord from T10 to L2, we have the sympathetic center, which promotes urine storage by helping the bladder relax and fill with urine. Moving up to the brainstem, we find two key players, the pontine micturition center and the periaqueductal gray, or PAG. The PAG acts as a relay station, receiving sensory information from the bladder and sending it to higher brain regions. When the time is right, it communicates with the pontine micturition center, which then sends signal downwards and coordinates things to either hold or release urine. Finally, we have the higher centers which include the cerebral cortex, especially the prefrontal cortex, which gives us conscious control over urination. The limbic system, which adds an emotional component, like the feeling urgency or embarrassment, and the cerebellum, which helps to maintain pelvic floor tone and ensures smooth coordination between bladder contraction and sphincter relaxation. So these are the main areas involved in controlling micturition. Now let's take a closer look at how they all work together. We will start with the sympathetic nervous system, which plays a key role in bladder filling. Think about the fight or flight response. When you're in danger, your body isn't focused on urinating. Instead, it's focused on survival. That's why the sympathetic nervous system helps store urine. The sympathetic centers involved in micturition are located in the thoracolumbar spinal cord, specifically from T10 to L2, in the lateral horn of the spinal gray matter. From there, sympathetic fibers travel via the hypogastric nerve to the bladder and urethra, where they release the neurotransmitter norepinephrine. Norepinephrine acts on two main types of adrenergic receptors. First, it binds to beta-3 adrenergic receptors located on the detrusor muscle of the bladder wall. Activation of these beta-3 receptors causes relaxation of the detrusor muscle, allowing the bladder to expand and fill with urine without contracting. Secondly, norepinephrine also acts on alpha-1 adrenergic receptors located in the internal urethral sphincter. Activation of these receptors causes the sphincter to contract closing the urethra and preventing urine from leaking out. So, in summary, the sympathetic system relaxes the detrusor muscle, allowing the bladder to expand and fill with urine 
and it contracts the internal urethral sphincter, preventing urine from leaking out. These two actions work together to promote urine storage. This coordinated activity ensures that the bladder can gradually fill with urine while maintaining continence. Next, we have the parasympathetic system, which is responsible for voiding or emptying the bladder. The parasympathetic center involved in micturition is located in the sacral spinal cord, specifically at segments S2 to S4. From here, efferent signals travel through the pelvic nerve to reach the bladder. The pelvic nerve releases the neurotransmitter acetylcholine, which binds to M3 muscarinic receptors located on the detrusor muscle of the bladder wall. Activation of these M3 receptors causes the detrusor muscle to contract, increasing pressure inside the bladder. This contraction pushes urine toward the urethra, allowing the bladder to empty. In addition to the autonomic nervous system, we also have somatic innervation, which gives us voluntary control over urination. This is especially important for maintaining continence, for example, when the bladder is full but it's not an appropriate time to urinate. The somatic motor neurons responsible for this control are located in the ventral horn of the sacral spinal cord again from segments S2 to S4, known as Onuf's nucleus. These neurons send signals through the Pudendal nerve, which innervates the external urethral sphincter, which is a ring of skeletal muscle that surrounds the urethra. Unlike the internal sphincter, which is made of smooth muscle and involuntary, the external urethral sphincter is under voluntary control because it's made of skeletal muscle. So, the pudendal nerve also releases acetylcholine, which binds to nicotinic receptors on the external sphincter muscle fibers, causing them to contract. This contraction keeps the urethra closed and prevents urine from leaking, even if the bladder is full. Okay, great. Now, let's see how all these systems work together to coordinate the filling and emptying of the bladder. As we already discussed, micturition has two main phases, filling and emptying phase. The process begins when the bladder is empty and starts to gradually fill with urine, which is continuously produced by the kidneys. As the bladder fills, its walls begin to stretch and this stretching is detected by mechanoreceptors located in the bladder wall. But because the bladder is empty, these mechanoreceptors send slow and few afferent signals via A-delta fibers through the pelvic nerve to the sacral spinal cord segments S2 to S4. From there, the information is relayed up to the thoracolumbar area, stimulating the sympathetic nervous system which then sends signals via the hypogastric nerve, which releases noradrenaline. Like we saw before, noradrenaline binds to two types of receptors, the beta-3 adrenergic receptors in the detrusor muscle, causing it to relax, and also binds to the alpha-1 adrenergic receptors in the internal urethral sphincter, causing it to contract. The signals from the mechanoreceptors are also directed up to the brainstem, specifically to the periaqueductal gray area in the midbrain. The PAG integrates this sensory input and communicates with higher brain centers, including the prefrontal cortex. At this point, the brain becomes aware that the bladder is mostly empty and that it's not time to urinate yet. Instead, the focus is on storing urine. So, the prefrontal cortex sends signals down to inhibit the pontine micturition center, keeping it inactive. So, the pontine center sends down signals in order to relax the bladder and contract the sphincters, so that the body can store urine. First, it sends signals to the sympathetic nervous system, also activating it, culminating in the relaxation of the detrusor muscle and contraction of the internal sphincter muscle. At the same time, the pontine center sends signals to inhibit the parasympathetic nervous system so that the detrusor muscle remains relaxed and does not contract prematurely. Finally, the pontine micturition center actives the somatic nervous system, which sends signals via the pudendal nerve, which releases acetylcholine that binds to nicotinic receptors in the external urethral sphincter, keeping it voluntarily contracted. Together, these actions ensure that urine is stored efficiently. The bladder fills, and both sphincters remain closed to prevent leakage until it's time to urinate.
As the bladder continues to fill and become full of urine, the afferent signals from the mechanoreceptors become more frequent and more intense, indicating that the bladder is reaching its capacity, usually around 300 to 500 milliliters in adults. This stronger input is once again sent via the pelvic nerve the, to the medulla and the go straight up to the periaqueductal gray area and from there to the cerebral cortex, letting us know that the bladder is full. At this point, our brain evaluates whether it's an appropriate time and place to urinate. For example, if a bathroom is nearby. However, if the answer is no, and it is not socially acceptable or convenient to urinate at that moment, the prefrontal cortex continues to inhibit the pontine micturition center in order to hold urine. But if the answer is yes, and we make the conscious decision to void, the prefrontal cortex sends excitatory signals to the pontine micturition center. As a result, the pontine center becomes active and sends down coordinated signals in order to initiate urination. Specifically, it sends signals that inhibit the sympathetic nervous system, which allows the detrusor muscle to contract and the internal urethral sphincter to relax. It activates the parasympathetic nervous system, so the pelvic nerve releases acetylcholine, which binds to M3 muscarinic receptors in the detrusor muscle, causing it to contract strongly, and it inhibits the somatic nervous system, which reduces signals through the pudendal nerve, leading to relaxation of the external urethral sphincter under voluntary control. With the detrusor muscle contracting and both sphincters relaxed, urine is expelled through the urethra, and that's how we urinate. Another important concept we should know is the micturition reflex. This is a primitive spinal reflex that is present in infants but is later brought under voluntary control as the brain matures. In babies, bladder control is managed at the spinal cord level, which means they don't yet have voluntary control, and so they cannot consciously decide when to pee. What happens is, as the bladder fills and stretches, afferent signals travel to the sacral spinal cord, which directly triggers parasympathetic efferent nerves to contract the detrusor muscle and relax the internal urethral sphincter. This causes urination to occur automatically, without any conscious control. But as children grow, the frontal cortex, the periaqueductal gray area, and the pontine micturition center mature, and they start to form connections with the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems. This development allows children to voluntarily inhibit the micturition reflex, enabling them to hold urine until it is socially appropriate to void. This process is what underlies toilet training, meaning the development of voluntary control over urination through coordination between the brain and the bladder. Last but not least, the pontine micturition center plays a crucial role in coordinating the activity between the bladder and the sphincters, a process known as vesicosphincter coordination. Normally, the bladder and the sphincters do not contract at the same time. When the bladder contracts to expel urine, the internal and external sphincters relax to allow the flow of urine. And on the contrary, during the filling phase, the bladder stays relaxed while the sphincters remain contracted to keep the urine in. This coordination is essential to the correct functioning of the urinary tract. But if the bladder and sphincters contract at the same time, it creates a condition called vesicosphincter dysenergia, where pressure inside the bladder rises abnormally. This is dangerous because if the pressure inside the bladder increases too much, it can push the urine upwards towards the ureters and then to the kidneys, potentially damaging the upper urinary tract and impairing kidney function over time. This kind of dysfunction can happen due to damage of the pontine micturition center, for example, due to neurological disorders like multiple sclerosis, spinal cord injury, or brainstem stroke. To evaluate how well this coordination is working, we can perform a urodynamic study, a test that measures pressure and flow during bladder filling and emptying. And that's it. The control of micturition. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, Please like, share, and subscribe to the Learning Stethoscope for more medical education videos. See you next time.